24 years of age, I decided that I wanted to live forever. I wanted to go into space to visit far off distant planets, and to do so, I wanted to put the body to sleep for thousands of years, a biological state called homeostasis. Now, sadly, I didn't figure out how to live forever, and I also didn't get into space, not one meter closer. Um, but the good news is that I'm not dead yet. And the other good news is that I was taken on this journey from the period of the biological dark ages into a period that I'm now calling the biological enlightenment. I discovered a field that Xavier just talked about called synthetic biology. And synthetic biology is genetic engineering taken to the next level. It's a field at the intersection of design and biology and engineering and computation that I believe is going to affect every single person who's sitting in this room today. But before I tell you more about synthetic biology, I want to tell you a little bit about one of its distant relatives, the GMO. Now, when I say the words GMO, what is it that comes into your mind? Maybe it's uh, evil corporations or mega farms. Did anybody think of this? This is our beloved Cavendish banana, and it's actually a genetically modified version of this little guy. Now, this is a wild-type banana. Its name is Musa acuminata, and it's sweet and creamy, and it has rich raspberry overtones. It sounds pretty delicious. But if you bite into it, you'll find all of these primitive seeds that have been genetically modified out of it over the last few hundred years of breeding on farms. What's the other thing that comes to mind when you think of the word GMO? Well, it's probably fields of corn or pesticides. But did anybody think of this? These are genetically engineered E. coli, not the E. coli that give you a stomach ache, but these are the industrial workhorse of bioengineers, and they're used for the production of many kinds of products, including, in this case, insulin. Now, this is my favorite GMO, and it should be more popular amongst the 430 million diabetics that there are in the world today. Now, I haven't always been such a proponent of GMOs. Actually, when I grew up in the UK in the 1990s, I was vehemently anti-GMO. I attended GMO protests at field sites across the UK. But the seven years of graduate school that I went through and working at NASA in the synthetic biology program has led me to believe that GMOs could be the Earth's best example technology for a sustainable future, both here and anywhere that we choose to go in the world. Now, GMOs are just one example where synthetic biology is allowing us to feed, fuel, and heal the world around us. There are many other examples where synthetic biology is transforming industries. And there are many examples of synthetic biology in the marketplace already today. And I wanted to give you just a few of them. There are engineered cells being used to produce jet fuel, engineered cells being used to produce bioplastics from wastewater, engineered cells for producing drugs, engineered immune cells for ridding your body of cancer, and engineered microbes that can live in your body as living medicines. And it's also about the future of food. Imagine a delicious, juicy beef burger that was made without killing the cow. These kinds of technologies are not only possible, but they're going to solve the future growing food crisis for our growing world. And that's not all. Look at this test tube of DNA. Inside this test tube of DNA, you can store enough information for the entire Library of Congress. But instead of storing it in zeros and ones, it can be stored in the letters A, C, T, and G. 30% of the world's copper is currently extracted using microbes, a much more environmentally friendly way of mining than smelting. This 
is a spider silk necktie, but the silk has been brewed using bacteria. And this is a children's nightlight that glows because of bioluminescent organisms that are found in the ocean. Or this, which is a piece of furniture that's literally been grown on demand from mushrooms. Now, synthetic biology is a tool that allows us to make new things using nature's toolkit. And it provides solutions to some very human needs. And in doing so, it connects techno science to some of the most important growing environmental problems that we see amongst us today. Now, from there, it just goes on to look like science fiction. Imagine in the future if you could be taking an organism that could clean your teeth when you sleep at night. Imagine clothes that could change color according to the mood that you're in. Or imagine trees that could be lighting up at night as living nightlights. Or a seed that you could engineer and send to Mars and have it grow into your future home. Now, synthetic biology is advancing by leaps and bounds. And industry and the marketplace are transforming at the same time. If you are not developing a biostrategy to understand the growing bioeconomy, then you're going to be left behind. How is your business thinking about biology in its new products and services that it creates? How are you thinking about the materials that you're sourcing and where you're going to be getting them from in the future? And are they sustainable? Or how is brand going to play a part in your future business? These are all important questions that you should be asking. Now, synthetic biology and GMOs, just like any other tool, can be used for good and they can be used for bad. But I believe that these technologies are going to see some of the most fundamental transformations amongst our society over the next 50 years. But I'm also a parent. I have a six-year-old girl and a four-year-old boy, and I care a lot about the future planet that they're going to inherit. I care about the food they eat, the water that they drink, and the air that they breathe. And I speak to a lot of other parents, reasonable, rational people like me and like you, and they fear genetic engineering because of the unintended consequences. Now, as a synthetic biologist, I agree that there are risks and unknowns, just like any other technology. But I also believe that synthetic biology is our best hope to create a future for our children, but one that combines the needs of the modern world with those of nature. Now, looking back, I never made it to space. Not yet, anyway. And my quest to live forever took a serious detour when I had two, ch two children. Um, it's a problem that I may return to later on as I get older. But what the journey uh, did lead me to believe is that the future is bright and full of promise. Synthetic biology can transform the world around us and can make our lives better. I hope that you'll all join me on this amazing journey along the path to your own biological enlightenment. Thank you.